in the market for a new dishwasher, don't know which one to choose? Well stay tuned as I show how we went about choosing a slimline dishwasher for a small kitchen. We then review the actual model we bought and say whether it's any good or not. In this section we're going to look at the basic selection criteria we started with and some of the specific features we valued most. Any quick trawl of various retailers' websites shows there are far too many different models to compare them all, so we look at how we generated a shortlist. We then dive into a bit more detail comparing our final two choices before looking at the one we eventually went for. If you want to jump ahead directly to a review of the Hotpoint HSFO 3223W, and that's a mouthful, feel free to scroll forward to this time point. We didn't have that many requirements. The price needed to be around £300, that's approximately $360, with a capacity of nine or more place settings, so you could stack in a couple of days worth of crockery for each wash. By far the most important requirement was that it fit in the available space, which was the right-hand cabinet in the image shown here. In another video, I show how I adapted this cabinet to make space for the dishwasher. And yes, the kitchen is really that small. We considered tabletop dishwashers, but didn't like the look of them. Limited capacity and using up valuable worktop space being the main criticisms. As well as the basic criteria outlined already, we were looking for something that had a good energy rating, low water consumption and a low noise level, the last being important as we expected it to be mostly used at night. Clear, easy to use controls and display, especially the ability to indicate the time remaining and give an indication or alert when the cycle had finished was something we valued. This point ultimately ruled out one of the four models that made it to our shortlist. More on that later. Does brand really matter that much? I'd say it probably does. A good or bad experience with a product from a particular manufacturer does influence me when making a subsequent purchase. Although, to be honest, I wonder how many of these different brands are all made in the same couple of factories. Finally, it needs to get the dishes clean, but only a real world test will prove that. More on that later. At the time of purchasing, the end of January 2023, there were 39 slimline dishwashers listed on Curry's website. There's no way you can compare them all, so we took some simple steps to cut this number down. Firstly, it needed to be white, which is generally cheaper than silver or stainless versions. We then factored in brand and excluded all those we'd never heard of. Does that mean that dishwashers from those brands aren't any good? Of course not, but you have to start somewhere. Although we've never had a Beco product, they seem to get reasonable reviews and had by far the lowest prices, so we broke our rules and included that. We again broke our rules and included the Bosch model, even though it was well outside the price target. This was based on our own positive experience with a larger Bosch dishwasher, and we wondered whether it might be significantly better in order to justify that higher price. So these are the four that made the cut. What really stands out is the change in pricing in less than a month. Would our ultimate decision have been different if faced with the updated prices at the time? Most probably yes. The Bosch for certain would not have made the shortlist at £489, and we could well have chosen another brand or model completely. The first to be cut was the Beko. Yes, it's the cheapest, but it has a basic feel about it, both in how it looks and also the controls and display. Reading a number of user reviews highlighted the limited nature of the display in particular. Will it clean your dishes? More than likely, but it wasn't for us. The Hotpoint 3M19 looks pretty similar to the 3T223, but at the time it was slightly more expensive had a poorer energy rating, and we wondered if it was just an older model, although I couldn't find anything out to confirm that. Again, it will more than likely do a good job, but it wasn't the best of the bunch as far as we could see. So, down to the final two. At this stage, we'd pretty much made up our mind to go for the hot point, but as I had a spur hour, I decided to troll through the tech specs and do a line-by-line -line comparison. 
Would I normally do this? Probably not. But as it wasn't my money we were spending, it seemed a reasonable exercise. On the next three slides, I've highlighted some key feature and performance comparisons. I'd suggest you pause the video if you want to look at them in more detail. As much as anything, doing this little exercise confirmed that, at least in our minds, the extra price asked for the Bosch model couldn't really be justified. At this stage, our final choice probably comes as no surprise. So having made our choice, let's have a look at it a little closer. Starting with unpacking, there's really very little to do. The unit is delivered as shown, no outer cardboard box. So it's just a case of stripping off the shrink wrap polythene and then lifting out the polystyrene protection. Both the front and back have short timber lengths to provide additional rigidity and protection. Once all the polystyrene uprights are removed, getting it off the base is probably the fiddliest task. A second pair of hands will probably help at this point. Just one piece of sticky tape needs to be removed, after which the door can be opened and the racks pulled out. Inside we found the cutlery caddy, instructions and a small pack of soap tablets. It takes five to ten minutes at most. Once unpacked, installation is pretty straightforward. Like most dishwashers and washing machines, it's a case of connecting the cold water feed pipe, the waste drain pipe, and then plugging it into the mains. In two of my other videos, see links in the description below, I go into more detail showing how I adapted an existing cabinet to make space for the dishwasher in the first instance, and how to install a new sink waste trap and make the final connections. Each of the nine programs are clearly depicted on the top of the door, so no bending down to peer at a small control panel is required. For this demonstration, we're going to use program five, the rapid 30 minute wash cycle. So, first close the door, switch on, select the required program by repeatedly pressing the program button until program five is displayed, and press start. Simple as that. The display is nice and clear and shows the expected runtime. The white shows 27 minutes Instead of 30, I have no idea. So, a couple of minutes into the program cycle and there is hardly any noise whatsoever. A little further into the cycle and the noise level is noticeably louder as the water is agitated around the compartment. However, it's by no means loud and there was no discernible noise in the adjacent room or the bedroom above. The program finished indication is fairly low key and possibly won't be heard from another room. That may be a good or bad thing depending on your viewpoint. However, the display clearly indicates the cycle has ended and the door can now be opened. The lower rack has two sets of fold down tines, front and rear. This gives room for larger bowls or pans. The cutlery caddy with two compartments can be positioned pretty much anywhere along the front set of tines. Both these features make for very flexible loading. At the rear of the rack are two height adjustable supports, ideal when loading baking trays or other taller items that may otherwise fall over. Looking further into the dishwasher compartment, we can see the orange 3D zone wash system, intended to provide more focused cleaning power for those really dirty dishes. The lower rack appears to move in and out smoothly with the minimum of fuss whilst the soap tablet compartment and rinse aid dispenser are pretty similar to what you would find on most modern dishwashers. Moving on to the upper rack, it again slides in and out with minimal effort. With another set of fold down tines and multiple layers for cups, beakers and glassware, the loading capacity looks good for what is a slimline model. The grey fold down shelves initially appeared a little stiff to move but in practice you'd probably use two hands when doing this, one to hold the rack itself steady. One of the features that gives added flexibility for loading taller items is the capability to raise or lower the upper rack. In the raised position this gives an added 3.5 cm usable height for items placed into the lower rack. Conversely, in the lowered position, that additional height can be useful when loading taller glassware 
into the upper rack. So, what do we really think? Does it clean the dishes properly? Well, it certainly seems to so far. How well it works over time and whether we have any issues with it are yet to be determined. Maybe I'll do a follow up in 12 months time. Overall though, we're very pleased with it and think it was a good deal at the price we paid. At the current higher price, maybe less so. Of course, you may have your own favourite brands and there's no doubt that there's plenty to choose from. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this review interesting and I hope to see you again soon on the next one.